left our heroes. They were traversing the darkest depths of the jungles of the 13th dimension. The snake people of Karnak were embroiled in a deadly civil war. And Marquette, the evil high priest of the snake people, had taken Lord Fitzroy prisoner. It's up to Lillian Gibraltar, ace fighter pilot and heroine of the 13th dimension, to rescue Lord Fitzroy from the evil clutches of Marquette the High Priest and restore peace to Karnak and the Snake Men. In the temple of Reptilicus, dark snake god of Karnak, Marquette, the evil high priest, is making ready his forces and preparing to sacrifice Lord Fitzroy in the name of Reptilicus, dark snake god of Karnak. Make it to the Temple of Reptilicus in time to save Lord Fitzroy! Find out now, in this episode of Lillian Gibraltar, heroine of the 13th Dimension! I was once a journalist, before my control was swept away, covering local events for a local paper, a small job for a small man. I had no particular gift or passion for the work. I had no delusion of Pulitzer's in my future. I wrote what I was told, not a sentence more. I were asked to cover the closure of a local mine. There had been an accident, an explosion. Five men were killed and I was asked to report the tragedy. The only witnesses to the event had all been dug up and buried again elsewhere, this time with more ceremony. The mining company said they must have struck a gas pocket. A tragic accident. Foul play was not suspected by the police. Nothing seemed suspicious to the police. The explosion compromised the mine, said the owner so it was closed for safety. I never thought about that. I had no taste for investigation. I reported what I was told at face value, never probing deeper. Perhaps I owed those men better. Maybe I owed them something more. As it stands, I know that story were not true. But whether or not it was a lie is still a mystery. Good evening. You are listening to the Switchboard, connecting all points in humanity's ongoing voyage 
into the unknown. I am the host, and it is 17 years since the beginning of the end. <coughs> Sorry. I was a... I was a less than mediocre journalist, not so much too lazy as too disinterested to do the work. The way it needed to be done. Even if I had the interest, I had never possessed the skills of an investigator. And now that I am confined to this island, and even if I had those skills, investigation would be all but impossible. On this show, all I do is report on what I am told at face value, never probing deeper. I won't put a gloss on it. I'm still the same barely competent journalist who wrote the unimportant stories for a local paper. Truth be told, I have no idea how many of these reports I receive are genuine, and how many are hoaxes. I cannot verify them. I wouldn't even know where to start if I were to attempt it. But still, if for every hundred lies I report, I also share one truth that saves a life, then it doesn't matter. This is the one thing that I can do to help and I'm going to do it. In the spirit of proliferation of information, we now return to our investigation on the Black Freighter. I say our, the information was provided to me by an anonymous party, and is being translated for me by Samantha Cole. I am but the conduit for the work of others, more able than myself. <coughs> oh, God. Uh, speaking of the work of others... More able than myself, the following are the first translations from Samantha. March 16th, 2005. After nearly two months at sea, we are finally nearing the fisheries of Sierra Leone. We'll be here for at least two weeks before we turn around and return to Hong Kong. Over four months away from home every trip, almost half the year. Every year I go out and do this. I'm getting so tired of it. Maybe this year will be the last time. Maybe five years of this is enough. The journey itself has been good. The sea has been calm, the weather fine. Everyone has been in good cheer. I could not ask for better conditions. And perhaps that is the problem. After all this time, monotony is the best that we can hope for. There has been some small interest on this voyage. The radio's picking up signal we can't explain. It sounds like a high-pitched whine, almost like whale song, but it's the wrong pitch completely. I'm going to talk to my family when I return. I'll find another job. March 21st, 2005. The haul is good this year. We may only be out here a few more days before we turn back for Hong Kong. The water is seething with fish. I've never seen anything like it. They're crowding around our ship and another ship that appeared during the night. The fish are almost slamming themselves against the hull. I have never seen fish act this way. But it's making them much easier to catch. The nets always come in bulging. That strange radio signal has gotten louder and more piercing. We attempted to radio the other ship to see if they're picking it up as well and that it's not just a problem with our radio. But that sound appears to be broadcasting on every frequency now. It's become impossible to establish radio contact. It's no matter. We've nearly reached our quota in a quarter of the usual time. We'll be turning home soon. Luck like this makes me rethink my future. If future expeditions can be over this quickly and easily, I might sign on again next year. We can only hope to be so lucky again. I intend to share the rest of the translation with you as I receive them from Samantha. Oh, not again. Oh, God, I hate this show. Hold on. Not not our show, of course. I, I mean the show where Piggy back in. Uh, never mind. Hold on. Up on KBLZ cables. Next song is SJ Tucker with Till It's Over. Three minutes to mid. 
at night Hold your loved ones close and tight Watch the stars and hold the light Burning in your heart Countdown in progress Live your life and kill the stress Speculations blazing guest Till the whole thing comes apart There we go. Uh, I'm terribly sorry for that. We're back now. Um, again, tune in next time. And if you are an unfortunate soul who's new to the show, uh, we're on a different frequency every night. Uh, Pirate Radio being what it is. So, uh, we now have our closing report, and that's it. Good night. <coughs> our first story tonight regards Patricia Williams of Dublin City, Ireland. Last month, Patricia was reported missing to the police only to arrive home two days later. Several weeks later, Patricia's body was found in the river Dodder. However, when police called to report the discovery to Patricia's family, it was Patricia herself who answered the phone. We thank an anonymous informant within the coroner's office for this report. We thank Metech for reports that the wild hunt has been spotted over the town of Nuvak. (coughs) 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 Apologies. In Greenland, and advise all listeners in the area to stay indoors. Over 70 pints of blood have have gone missing from blood banks across Europe this week alone. There is no sign of forced entry, but foul play is suspected. 
Have you witnessed a supernatural event? Have you had an encounter with an entity you cannot explain? Do you have vital information for people around the world? If so, I will be happy to relay it. Please send all reports to the host switchboard, all one word, at gmail.com. For now, this is the host, reminding you never go at night, never go alone, and always go armed. The Switchboard is a Hog and Dice production, written and directed by Stephen Jack Cullen, with music by Thomas O'Boyle and Kevin MacLeod. The voice of the host was Keith Byrne. The voice of Samantha Coe was Alison Marcellus. You can find out more and see our other projects at hoganddice.com. We really are open to your reports, so please send your written reports or audio recordings to the host switchboard at gmail.com, or tweet them directly to the host at switchboardpod. This episode's broadcast failure was performed by Stephen Jack Cullen. The song was Till It's Over by S.J. Tucker, which is part of the Green Album, a collection of new or previously unreleased music by a collection of artists concerned with the state of our environment. 25% of all profits from sales of the Green Album go toward the Rainforest Trust. You can find out more at thegreenalbum.net. If you're in Dublin city centre and are looking for a place to avoid the crushing tidal waves of really, really tiny spiders, why not drop into the clockwork door? They have a games room, a study room, a fully stocked kitchen, and a board games and reading room. You only have to pay for the time you spend there, and rates start at eight cent a minute for your first two hours. Find out more at clockworkdoor.ie. If you enjoyed today's episode, maybe you'd also like being covered in really, really tiny spiders. <laughs>